Hi, I'm Chuck and I'm a Vulture creator. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about how and especially why you would want to use Vulture's new managed databases. Um, now managed databases, you've probably heard of them, they're also known as DBAS, spelled D-B-A-A-S. What does that stand for? Database as a service. Let me show you how it works. Here I am, my, my.vulture.com. Uh, so I use Drupal. Um, that's a content management system. Makes it very easy to have, uh, to set up a website or a blog or um, whatever it is that you, you like. I'll use the modest uh, um, specifications. I'll put it in New York. Now, uh, Drupal will set up a MySQL database by default, but I'll show you how, um, I mean, just as an example, I'll show you how you can get it to, um, to use an external database. And then we use a Vulture managed database uh, for Drupal's database. Um, yeah, I'm gonna use the small upgrade here. Um, this is just a demo, so I don't need these. I've got my secure shell keys. Actually, I don't, I don't think I need to use my secure shell. My Drupal, okay. Um, right, so on the one hand, I have to deploy the, the Drupal instance. In, in your case, it could be anything. Um, and I also have to deploy this. I'm actually going to have to use two windows. Um, like I said, we have MySQL already implemented. Postgres and Redis are, are coming soon. You have uh, most of the same options that you have with any other um, instance. And I mean, you can choose the CPUs, the storage, and so on, different uh, levels or according to your needs. Um, this is what I was saying about redundancy right here. Replica nodes, it's just an identical copy to your database that is just available. That's all it does is it is available. Um, and well, hopefully that's all it does. But if anything happens to the acting database, the replica will jump in. Of course, you can also have two replicas if you really need that level of of uh, stability, um, then the second one will jump in just in case anything happens to the to the first copy. Um, you make yourself a little database clone army. Let's call this Drupal SQL. Okay. All right. Uh, so I, I need to actually see both windows at the same time. So I'll open a second one. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my Drupal instance is up. I can, I can show you, it, it doesn't have um, that much configuration to do. Um, and as you'll see, Drupal by default comes with a MySQL database in the same server. So it'll install this on that same server. We don't need it, but um, we can tell it to use an external MySQL database, which will, of course, be managed by uh, uh, Vulture. Uh, okay. I know an authorization is required. There. So I'm taking the user and password from down here just for the very first uh, initial access to, to my Drupal instance. I can just copy that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not keeping this as just an example. So uh, you, you have pretty um, advanced control over uh, a lot of different aspects of this, but you can also just use the basic default options up until here, right? It's already asking us for the database info and, uh, you've got the type. We'll keep it here as my SQL. Um, all of these are things that we will invent on our, uh, managed database instance and under advanced options, we'll need that as well. Cause you see that the default host is localhost. Well, it's not going to be localhost. So it's actually going to be a Drupal set up on a, uh, 
a virtual instance on Vulture's servers and MySQL database, managed MySQL database set up on a different Vulture instance. And um, so we're actually going to take all of this info from, from over here. Okay. Um, and you, you will also have all the information, in, including copyable strings, in order to access your, uh, your database by the command line. And I will actually do that just for a moment. So right now, Vulture is actually going through all the steps that you would normally have to go through manually of installing your database, uh, keeping it up to date. And like I said, I'll show you the, the schedule for doing that. Um, I mean, Vulture will still do the updating, but you can control when and how that happens. Once you have the Drupal uh, website configured and uh, it's accessing your, your managed database, you can actually go into the managed database through the command line as well. Uh, and actually it'll give us a string that copies and then we won't need most of these things ever again. Okay, now the, uh, the managed database is up and running um, and I can go and see all the details here. You have most of the same details that you would have with any other instance. There's a few things to keep in mind. Uh, fine, so you have your connection details here and it, it actually gives you all the details for whichever database and whichever uh, user that you select when you add a couple more then you can choose from different ones it gives you different things like i said you have a copy uh, you have a, a connection string here that you can copy to connect through the command line um, you also have a list of any queries that are running at the moment of course in this basic uh, demo none of these queries will take more than a, a couple of seconds um, but it'll give you a list of recent queries and um, details about them and you already have uh, uh, some logs already showing here. Okay, you have all the basic data of um, that you selected for the managed database. Here you can add users, and let's do that right now. I'm not going to use the Vulture admin uh, user. I'll just make a um, Drupal SQL user. How's that sound? Um, if you don't type in a password, it makes one up. And it did that, okay. And you can see that it's there next to the Vulture admin. And I'll also create a database um, to use just for Drupal, Drupal SQL DB. You don't have to do that. You can use the default one anyway, but uh, I want to show you how it can be done. Okay, now, okay, the users. Um, here under settings, you have, um, something I promised that I would mention, something that I mentioned before, um, you can choose what time your database could be updated when necessary. If there's an update, when it will actually be done. Take note of this. It actually says that the DNS will remain the same while maintenance is being performed, but the underlying IP address will change. Um, that doesn't, uh, it could take a four hour period. So if you're your app needs to be available around the clock. Rest assured, it is um, that uh, DNS that they're talking about here. If we go back to the overview, um, this will still remain the same, right? Um, but the the actual IP address to access it will be it will be updated in the DNS. Um, you have these, which is the same as you would use with any uh, MySQL. Um, server. It's actually, like I said, it's actually less to keep track of and worry about. Um, here you have the option to migrate data from another database, actually to migrate another database here to this one. And of course, to delete it, you'd go there. I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, okay. So if I go to the connection details here, make this a little bit bigger. And I select the database that I just created and the user that I just created. Now all of this is updated. I can see the password. Um, 
I'll make it small again. I will enter all of that here. Okay. The database name is here. The username. And that password. Okay, uh, and like I said, it will, Drupal will create a database on the local host, but we need to change that to point to this one, the managed database. Okay, and then the port number. I think I'm fast enough to type that if I have my number lock on. 16751. Um, here you can you just add a, a special prefix for Drupal to use for uh, all of the tables that it creates, just in case you want to use the same database for something else. Um, it's probably a good idea regardless. It's not that confusing to see this, this prefix. And I'm not saving it now. I don't actually need to use any of these again, but while that's doing it though, um, I have a script to enter in the command line MySQL for my uh, database. This is an old one, so I'm clearing this, and I want this connection string. I click to copy it. Um, this is a, a bash script. You might use something else. This way I can paste this, including the password, directly in there just as a command. I don't have to type it in. And if I close that here, I can just run it. And I'm accessing the, the database that I just made. Let's see. You can see that the second one there is the Drupal SQL uh, database that I created. Um, oh, use. Um, at some point, Drupal in this uh, installation here going on the left will populate this database with, I don't know, like 40 different tables. Let's see if they're there. Some of them are there um, so far. Is it added some more tables? Yes, look at that. It has added more. All right, now it's ready to, to enter the, the info for the site that you'd be making. So you could put anything uh, as himself. How's that? Um, there we go. Create Oz himself. Um, I don't know. 1939 is part of my password because that's when that movie came out. Oh, I have to remember it now. Great. Um, okay, so default country none it's Oz right so uh, I'm leaving all of the updates and everything checked as the default and it's it's almost done I believe it just uh, it takes a few minutes for it to get everything up yeah there it is okay now I have my my website there of course it's not very uh, customized here but um, that's not what I'm uh, showing you here but if I, um, I don't know, create a, a basic page, okay, so anyway, here I can write something, um, oh, good, if I do select from, I believe it's, node and then two underscores body here it, it actually shows me the HTML that I've written in here it actually shows me the, the text of the page so just to prove to you that what I'm doing here on the Drupal uh, control panel is actually going into my vulture managed MySQL database um, 
like I said, there's not that much to show you simply because it's actually less for you to do if you use this service. Thank you for joining me. I hope you uh, find it useful.